What was the first time we met? I think it was at a Technicolor. Oh, that's right. Technicolor. And he challenged me to do Christopher Walken. So I heard you do a pretty good Christopher Walken. And I had already done like a bunch of ADR for Christopher Walken. So I do Christopher Walken. And I well, did yeah, just like that. <laughs> and he goes, hi, I'm Christopher Walken. Wow. <laughs> and I said, that's pretty good. But I got you beat. I pretty much slinked out of the room. And as soon as the door closed, Nolan turns to everybody and goes, who was that? That's true. Who was that kid? Who the hell is that? He thought I was like a fan, which I was. I was a fan of, of Nolan's before, before because I remember I was sitting in a hotel room. I was doing a terrible movie in Texas in like the end of January. So it was like iced over. It was terrible. And the only thing that, that sustained me through that, through that shoot was a buddy of mine let me borrow his PS3. And he said, there's a game you've got to play. It was Uncharted. And so I was, thank you so much for the PS3. And I, and I took it from him. I put it in my room. And I did exactly what I should have done, which is I went out and I, I got Assassin's Creed. <laughs> and um, I played through that. And um, and then I finally finished. I was like, all right, I'll open this Uncharted game. And it blew my mind because, I mean, the performances were fantastic. And then I found out the way that they had done it, which, like, if you were in a Jeep, then they actually built the Jeep and, and you they were interacting with everybody. And I remember I emailed, I think it was Kovats, I emailed the audio department of Naughty Dog and just saying, I want to let you know that what you guys did is amazing. Didn't that say I'm an actor too or anything? And I just became an instant fan of yours. And then when I, I finally was like, oh, you mean Nolan? No, I was recording at one studio and they were down at the end. I think you guys were doing two. You're doing Uncharted Possibly, 2, I think. I don't know. And I was like, I, I just, I'm, 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 a I'm a huge fan. I totally fanboyed out. So that guy as well you should as well i should there's no way that that guy seven years ago would ever have thought that that i would be here so i'm like the ringo star of this thing i'm the luckiest one to be here the ringo star isn't that terrible no it's a terrible you're thing george to say. at least you're george <laughs> hey i'll be george and i'm not one of these people like when did you notice it? well dude the young lad came up i mean first of all you know he's not that much younger than me and second of all you we went like what 78 70, I'm, I'm 79, so it works Literally like months way. apart. We look amazing. There was that table read that we did. That was the first time when you ever actually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, the thing is, it's, we've been able to prosper in, yeah. this, in this part of the industry because we just really enjoy what we do. We're incredibly good at it, and we're humble. <laughs> and that's what's important is the humility when you're this big of a star, right? Kind of a big deal. Kind of. Kind of a big deal. No. Well, all I can think of the entire time is <laughs> is what people are going to clip out and make gifts of, and like what the caption is going to read. I just th that's the entire the, the my mentality, my focus right now is thinking about this right here is going to be clipped out and is going to be a gif. When did you learn that you're going to be brought on to Uncharted Four? Then what were those discussions like? Pretty, I mean, they, you guys have been working on this thing for for a while. Once you're kind of in the doghouse, you're you're in the doghouse, and you're kind of aware of of the happenings and everything. It was just a conversation that that Neil and I had, and he said, you know, how would you feel about playing um, Nate's brother? And I hung up because I thought he was kidding with me. I was like, dude, don't tease me like that. Don't don't do me like that. And it became a discussion. And you know, obviously, there's one of the main things that I think is important about working in any kind of aspect whether it be games tv film or whatever is is you got to have trust you need to you're being very vulnerable with people whether you're being funny whether you're being dramatic you know if nothing else just the sheer mechanics of it, you're wearing this ridiculous suit you know so it requires trust and, and the more you can have those relationships it you know um it, it seems to work better it seems to come across better so i think maybe that was one of the things that neil wanted to do is that there's this relationship between a brother he gives me shit constantly so he's like hey that's natural it's not really us acting it's us just kind of going by different names but doing the same thing yeah except he gets to be the older guy yeah and i'm the younger guy that's a nice touch <clears throat> it's a great fun. touch uh it was in my contract sam is a mysterious part of his past he thought he lost his brother he, he doesn't know so now for somebody to show up it's almost like seeing a ghost you know, at first there's that mistrust, in the, but then you know, he warms up and it's, I think for a time, it's his chance at redemption, his chance to get Big Brother back, family. The through theme through all these games is the idea that a family and his, you know, he's made his family. He's been doing his life for so long. He's gotten settled into his, his life with Elena. And when you throw something into the mix after so many years and it's back, it's heart wrenching. They didn't part under bad circumstances, you know, they just parted the lack of sam being in drake's life for so long is one of the things that has driven him in the first few games there's an abandonment issues there's all kinds of things and it's an interesting change to see him under a different set of circumstances it's a really good opportunity to look into this character and you know, he's always leading the adventures and i think sam in this one takes a little more of the 
you know, at some points of the game, he takes a little charge and it's like, all right, little brother, this is how we do it. I think the relationship between Sam and Nate is interesting because exactly like you said, Sam is like, I'm the older brother, I'm the elder. But there's circumstances that happen in our life that sometimes, you know, you've defined your life by either the, the best or worst moment in your life and you've never quite moved on from that. But then the other people in your life have. So it's, it's interesting to me, and this was kind of the question that, that we all sat down and had, and I had, I had discussion with Neil's like, okay, so let's, let's parse this out and let's talk about, you know, like when I played Joel, I was the youngest guy that was, that was going for that role. And it didn't matter because there was something I knew about Joel that was special to me. So I wanted to do the same thing and kind of carrying the same process here is like, how can Troy play Nolan's older brother? That's, that's weird. So what do we do with that? Sam has never really quite moved on. But Nate has, and he's found Elena, he's found Sully, he's found his calling, and I've never quite moved on from this. So in this way, the younger has become the elder and the elder has become the younger. Mm. And that's, that to me creates a really interesting dynamic because when that person who is the elder tries to you know, position himself and posture up to that, and then when the younger is like, I, you know, I, can, I got this, I can, I can actually jump pretty high and pretty far, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that kind of situation. Sam is really, really good. I think Sam is incredibly charming. But there's something that happens when you see that younger brother that's just a little bit more charming than you, is just a little bit better looking than you, is a little bit more talented than you, you know, can run faster, easier, jump higher, better. And I think that's Nate. I think Sam, before Nate, was he was the golden child. He was good. He had it down. And then up comes this thing that surpasses him. Um, so I think he's a thief, but I think that in reality, anything that Sam can do, Nate can do better. But I don't think Sam would ever acknowledge that. There's a, there's a sibling rivalry to a certain point. If you can figure out how you pick up, a, you know, how do you pick up that sibling rivalry mm -hmm. from the time that they were together to where they, you know, lost touch mm -hmm. and then they bring it back. And it's kind of like that doesn't go away to a certain point, but I think it's not, it's not addressed in terms of, um, you know, like it's this is a big theme in the game. It's addressed in some of the little quips and the things like, you know, just where I've taken it for granted for so long. Like I have the idea. Well, this is what this is about. And let me teach you. You know, Nate is always the guy who will take, get everyone around and go, no, you don't understand. This is what. The, and he's the one who goes be able to finish the sentences because he knows, too. Right. It's almost like you think about people. You know, people who play toppers and they're trying to, well, yeah, like, how tall are you? I'm uh, six feet. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I'm like six one. Like, <laughs> did I say six feet? I'm six two. I mean, well, not six two, but I'm like six feet and three quarters. So, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm six two. I but. did the conversion wrong because I actually <clears throat> meters. Are you doing metric? Because yeah, cause I guess actually it translates. It's not, there's not an actual one to one. You know, so it's just Either one of those things where, and, and the funny thing is, and I think where that's worked for us is that's what we do when we're just yeah. breaking stones <laughs> with each other. You know, every, all actors in our group, we like, like to laugh, right? I mean, this was an easy uh, fit and we just had to just put the suits on. I mean, it wasn't yeah. a lot of, you know, I'd love to, we could talk for hours about, oh, this the and process. that. But the, the, proce but the process truth is, is like you put on the suit and, you know, just try to bring the, the fun that we have. Of course, you know, fans don't, you know, they're, they're, think, they think we hate each other. Yeah. They it's think like, that we're, we're he's like, he's better and you're better, <laughs> but you're better. I mean, come on, everybody knows I'm better, <laughs> but you know, it's just, you know, we don't get into that. <laughs> he knows his place. How well would you say the audience understands uh, who Nathan Drake really is? They've known him for almost a decade now, but is it almost like a Don Draper type situation where they don't really know what's going on? Oh, wow. It's a good question. Um, well, you know what? Do you like I mean, hit women and drink whiskey at three o'clock in the afternoon? You know what? I, that's actually a better question. I think that I would think that people have a good fix on who he is, but there are people who probably think they have a good fix on me that have no idea the dark, horrible things that go on in the back of my mind. Like right now. Suppress anyway, the urge. Uh, but you know, Suppress I think it's a better. Urge. I think it's a better uh, question for you to answer because, as a fan of the game, because you know, like somebody who played the game. And, and now is part of it, and part you're part of the family. I feel, and I've always felt, especially after you know, getting to know you, that there's so much of of Nolan that's in Nate, and so much of Nate that's in Nolan. And I think that's interesting in the way that you have you have the person that is this guy is charming, is witty, is quippy, is dashing, is you know, adventurous, and everything else. 
which plays against the obstacle of who they really are as a person. And like, you're a very private person. You, you get out in front of a group and you can hold court better than anybody. But when it comes down to it, you're the guy that would prefer the table in the back of the restaurant. Oh yeah. With nobody else. And I think there's a lot of Nate that's in that as well. You can see Drake being by himself and he's being fine. But as these games have progressed, like you said, in the very beginning, you know, he was, he didn't want Elena around. He wanted to be by himself or he and Sully or Sully, you go off and do your, do your, do your thing. And then after this whole thing is over, we'll get a bottle of whiskey and we'll be, you know, we'll split cigars and, and, and trade stories. Yeah, Cause that's easier. It's way easier. Yeah. But now as the games have progressed, it's like, no, now this is like, these are the, like you said, this is the family that I've created for myself. So I think that you have seen kind of this evolution in who Drake is. And I, I think that that's from a player's perspective, perspective, talk for a living, player's perspective, that's interesting because I want to see if you had the same character, you know, throughout three games, then you're just playing the same game. Just, it looks prettier or whatever. But this is actually, you've seen the story evolve. And now that means that whatever adventures you go on, there's there's more at stake because now th those relationships have evolved as well as the characters have. It's not a mistake that they aged him, yeah. you know, accordingly a little bit. And I think that what's great about that is fans like Troy, I mean, people who have kind of followed it from the beginning, as they've grown, they're growing with somebody. So it's almost this, you, you actually feel like that's almost like a real person. You're not going to play Jack and Daxter, and all of a sudden they're, they're getting a little slower. You know, it's like <laughs> Sully's two hundred years old now. Yeah, that's, yeah, what, that's, yeah, that's what's amazing. Yeah, exactly. He's aged five years since we've started. Well, that's game. because Richard McGonagall <laughs> is a <is> hundred. <laughs> so, uh, best so, actor on this thing. I think people were surprised, obviously, at PSX with uh, the announcement of the brother, and then they learned, oh, Troy Baker is voicing it. Like, of course, yeah. that just makes perfect sense. Well, it does. It really does, if you think about it. I mean, I, I got to do a great role in Last of Us. It was so much fun, and, and we've known each other. And there's, for whatever reason, uh, there's this legions of fans of, of both of us. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's humbling, and it's great, especially because we always laugh at this whole idea. They're like, well, Troy's better than Nolan. Nolan's better than Troy. And we're, it's, it's so ridiculous because... Well, then we sit up in our towers brooding, like plotting each other. Yeah, like, yeah. How will I bring him down this time? And instead, we're, you know, we're, we're having a drink together. And we're <laughs> giggling about it all. And, it, and it's like, uh, you know, Wonder Twin Powers Unite, form of Drake Brothers. You Did know? you make it explode? I didn't make it explode. I didn't explode. <laughs> Older brother. All right. <laughs>